Another question and answer session here. This is one I've been looking forward to all day. Joining me, former Blue Jackets goaltender Pascal LeClaire. Now, I was being Thank serious. You. I was being serious about that. That one's not working. Do we have this one? There it is. It's there on? You go. Okay, you perfect. Um, Thanks, guys. So I was serious. I've been looking forward to this because, first of all, it's been so long since I've seen you. I saw you a couple of years ago at the draft. Yeah. And But I was I was actually there in Syracuse when you debuted. Yeah, we, we started together. We started our, together, our and here we are. To pros, like, uh, Who would have thought that, what was that, 2001? Here we are, yeah. 16 years later. We yeah. never predicted we'd be sitting at the Dublin Irish know, Festival, I, right? I think shame, especially for me. Maybe for, not for you, but for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's kind of true, actually, as a matter of fact. Uh, a former first-round pick of the Blue Jackets, and I want to take you all the way back to when you began because, you know, you came into the minor leagues. You had a great career in junior. Obviously, he's a first-round pick. You did. And you came into uh, the American Hockey League, and you actually were taking over for a guy, Jean-Francois Labay. JF had come up here to the Columbus Blue Jackets, and you had to take his place. He was a really popular guy and won a lot of games in the minor leagues. And here you are, a rookie, being thrown right into the fire. Uh, do you remember what those first feelings were like for you, turning pro? Uh, I remember the first few months in Syracuse were not easy for me. Like, uh, I think I got booed a few times because, like, well... GF LeBay was so popular there, and then I had a kind of a rocky start as well, kind of learning the ropes. And uh, um, but then I got used to it, and then this—I guess it was good for me as far as experience, kind of dealing with some kind of uh, adversity, because I was—I was used to—I was lucky enough to have a good junior career, so I've never had really people or my own fans booing me. So it was, that was kind of new, but uh, kind of prepared me for the post once in a while when you gave up a bad goal, I guess. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but that was good. That was good. That's, it's a good school, and I uh, learned a lot in Syracuse. And it's, uh, I think it's a. Uh, I was like any other junior kids. Now, uh, I didn't think the American League was that good. When you're good in junior, you think you're gonna go in there and just just dominate right off the bat. And you realize pretty quickly that uh, the American League there's a full of really, really talented players, and uh, that are knocking at the NHL door. And then you gotta get you gotta get used to that and learn to deal with it. So. Yeah, a lot of times when you come in as a, a young pick like that, there'll be a veteran guy there, and you know they'll give they kind of ease you into it. They didn't really ease you into it uh, there in Syracuse. They threw you into the fire. But as you kind of alluded to, I guess in the in the big scheme of things, it was better for you. You learned, maybe you learned the hard way, but you learned and it got you to the NHL. Yeah, big time. And uh, but again, I got the chance to lean, learn my way in when I got here in Columbus with Mark Denis. Mark Denis helped me quite a bit, and. Even back then when Rung Tugnut, he, uh, I was just in training camps, but I, I, I did learn a lot from these guys. And then I would bring that my few weeks here and then bring it back to Syracuse. So I didn't have somebody that with me all the time up there to kind of help me out. But at the same time, like I, I wanted to play and then uh, they gave me the chance to play on a regular basis that back then. And I was lucky enough, you know, to, to adjust. And uh, uh, so I don't regret anything. I think that was good for me. You have you have to go through the good stuff and the bad stuff to, to get to the NHL, and I was just part of the, the program for me, I guess. That's one of the things I always loved about you. You've been level-headed like that all the time, whether it was going well or whether it was going bad. You've always been the same guy. Has that been easy for you throughout your career to be that same guy? Uh, it's, I always thought it was easier in hockey than just the regular life. Now, I have a kid and stuff, so that's, I'm not as leveled as I used to be on the ice. <laughs> my, my, I have a two-year-old daughter now that she 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 gets me going a bit more than a bad goal. <laughs> but uh, no, I don't know. I was just that kind of personality. For me, I when when I was a young kid, uh, I used to look at Patrick Waugh and and Mark Denis, and then like I saw these guys, like I studied these guys quite a bit, and like they they gave up bad goals, they had bad games. So when when I was going through a rough stre rough stretch, uh, I would say if this happens to these guys, these guys are legend. This there's a good chance that's gonna happen to me. So I always try to have that mentality it's not always easy when you're in it um but uh, again that's uh i always love hockey too that was a that was always stayed a game for me there's um so I, that probably kind of helped me to stay level like that so as you mentioned you watch mark denny and then you get to come here and you get to play with mark denny is there anything that really jumps out at you that he told you in the time that you two worked together that really helped you to get better as a player uh I don't know. I, I don't know if it's just like one word or a few things. Just kind of being on the ice with him every day during training camp. And I do I do talk about these two guys. But Rick Wamsley is a guy that had a big influence uh, on my career. Uh, he was the goalie coach uh, w when I started. 
Um, and these, these three guys really, yeah, and, uh, they, they helped me out, just kind of see how they prepared, uh, uh, how they came into camp in shape, because uh, I thought I was in good shape when uh, coming out of junior, and I was not in good shape at all. Um, but uh, just, you, I think you learn more, like, watching the veteran players and the star players, how they prepared. Uh, so I kind of just, like, said, well, if these guys do it, like, I got to do it too, so. Since you brought it up, there's one thing that I remember from years ago. Oh we, came, we came into, uh, I forget where we were playing, but we bussed to Hershey, Pennsylvania after the game. We got in late at night, and we went to the Hershey Park Lodge. And one of the great things about staying at the Hershey Park Lodge is when you got in there, they had a whole box of Hershey bars right on the, oh, yeah, yeah. Right on the front desk when you checked <laughs> in, right? And uh, we got in about 1 o'clock in the morning. And I saw you grab three or four of those things. Well, probably. <laughs> I was uh, just a disaster when I was 20 years old. I remember my first my first game in Syracuse. Uh, like I wasn't used to the long bus bu bus rides, and then uh, I was eating cookies on my way to Hamilton. And Rick Wamsley caught me at a at like a pit stop. So it's like, what are you doing? It's like you're we're playing in three hours and you're eating cookies. I had no clue. So I, I had to learn. I had to learn everything, and it's. Uh, uh, diet wise uh, training and but that's that's probably do I don't remember that that's yeah. probably untrue you're trying to entertain <laughs> all these people it and, might have been uh, me that grabbed all pink, of those but, uh, no I did I, <laughs> I, I I probably did but like, not now I do like the I work with young players and juniors it's the same pattern like everybody's the same so it's I guess it's just part of the part of the journey now in all the fairness there we're talking about 2001 2002 we're talking about 15 years ago so you know the league was it, it was changing, but it's not what it was today. Yeah. And, and I'm sure, like you said, the guys that you're working with today, it is completely different. Nutrition is uh, is one of the top things they worry about. Oh, the, these kids now, they're when they're 14 years old, they're 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 training like they're NHL players. Like they're they're they all have like uh, uh, people that take care of their food, their training. They're, they they worry about their sleep patterns when they're 14, 15 years old. It's the the, the game of hockey really changed completely within, the, like you said, the, the last 10, 15 years. Back then, we didn't have that. Like, it, I guess there's some good stuff and bad stuff uh, about it. Um, uh, but but again, like we were just kind of said, well, you go play and you figure it out. And at some point, if you get in trouble, you adjust. And it was more as we go. We didn't have that big plan coming in at a, at a young age. We just had to learn through our mistakes a bit more. So as a guy that's now on the other side and you're dealing with young guys, uh, I, I say this too. I coach baseball in the summertime, and it, and it sometimes it drives me crazy. And these kids are 14, 15 years old, and and you want to say, look at all this information that we're giving you, everything that you know we've experienced, and we're trying to set you the right way. But yet sometimes they listen, sometimes they don't. As a guy on the other side, what are you trying to teach some of the young kids that you're trying to help get their career on track and hopefully make it to where you did? Well, the the most important thing that I'm try, I try to tell them is to be resilient because like now most of these kids they don't I don't know it's it's my opinion but like when they'll they'll deal with adversity maybe a different way than we did and uh, and I guess they have more people helping them so maybe they're a little bit less use of finding answers by themselves they always kind of go say well things don't work out I'm gonna go see this guy I'm gonna go see this guy uh, that's a pattern with the, the kids sometimes that I deal with that I see coming back a bit more and they just have to be thrown in there and kind of grind it out for, for a few weeks just so you have to figure it out um, and my personal opinion is now too like a lot of kids they only play hockey or they only they're a one sport uh, athlete uh, back then we played more sports uh, we played soccer we played uh, baseball basketball during the summer and now what what worries me with our younger generation of kids that it's they, they become little robots and they only do one sport. Uh, and we do see in junior, like a lot of kids get sick of playing hockey. I'll use hockey as an example when they're 17, 18 years old because they've been training like pro athletes since they're like 12 years old. Uh, to me, I think it's too much. I think we've got to find some kind of balance in between that they have a life outside the sport a bit. We talked about that balance life. Uh, they need to find other things. It's just their own sport. But at the same time, at least when they go to the, the arena or they go to the gym, they're, they're motivated and they're excited about it. So you just got to find the right balance. Sometimes it's, it's not always easy because there's a lot of people that kind of say, oh, I have the way for you to make it. And everybody, like, you get, they get popular for a, few, for a few years and a new guy come out and it's a new thing. And I think we got to make things a bit simpler. And uh, But that's my opinion. I mean, like, somebody maybe may, 
maybe somebody else would have a totally different opinion, but that's kind of what I see. So, Let's go back to, again, when you were a young player and you came here and you joined a young franchise. And I mean, you know, you're French-Canadian, you played your junior hockey in Montreal for the Rocket, and now all of a sudden you wind up Syracuse, New York, Columbus, Ohio, a little bit different hockey markets, but yet again the fans were, they were great and filling the house uh, when you were playing here. Oh, big time. I think it's the most... Uh we were talking about it last night. I was uh, at dinner with uh, Rick Nash last night and uh, Jared Bowl, and uh, we're we're laughing because we're the old Blue Jacket generation now. Like, uh, so we're. Uh, but we are, something that comes up in our dinner when we get the chance to 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 get together. It's all like the fan base was always been there since day one. Uh, obviously, they understood that it was an expansion team, and uh, and for a player that was good, it kind of took a bit pressure, less pressure on us especially the young kids coming in says, okay, no, you know, like they give us maybe bigger roles at a younger age. And uh, the fans always kind of accepted that we were going to make mistakes. And uh, so for us, that helped us quite a bit. So especially for a young, young group of players. So this team starts to get consistently good, consistently in the playoffs. And, you know, easy, even as an alum, if the kids don't know you, it doesn't matter. You're still a part of uh, putting it together and then everybody becomes more popular because of it. Oh yeah, well I mean for us, for alumni, we don't try to come here to be popular. I mean I, I always kind of see the thing is like now we, we did our little job and now it's time for other players to come in if that's their time. Uh, but it's, it, it is great to see the team doing well now, uh, especially because the fan always, the fan base always stayed behind the team even through the, the, the tougher years and it's tough to win the NHL. Like there's a 20, about 30, 30 teams, teams now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that that want to win the Stanley Cup and everybody's pushing so hard, so uh, there's no bad teams anymore. So it's really hard to kind of be to be good on a regular basis, and they've done a good job in the last few years to build block by block, bring the young guys in and guys that are gonna um, uh, be really good for a long time. You have uh, Nick Foligno, who's a great guy. I played with him in Ottawa. He's a great leader here, and uh, see he does a great job. And these are players like that are gonna help and. Uh, but it's great. This is you want you want your former teams to do well, and uh, um, so no, I'm excited about the future for them for sure. Yeah, you mentioned playing with Nick in Ottawa. You were traded for Antoine Vermette at the time. You went to Ottawa. He came here. Can't get rid of, can't get rid of the French guys. Eh? One <laughs> no, for one. That's right. <laughs> that's a straight up hockey yeah. deal right there. But what uh, do you remember at that time? Were you shocked and how sad were you that you were? leaving the organization, even though you're going back to Canada, just to be leaving the place where you started? Well, well for me, I, I was kind of expecting it because it was the first year, that's the first year that the, uh, we made the playoffs here, and then I was hurt, and Steve Mason was in his first year, and he had a, it was an un, he was unbelievable back then, and I know they were trying to make a, tr a trade to, uh, to get the team a bit better and give, uh, help them to make a push for the playoffs, and they didn't want to change their core, and I was there maybe with a little bit of value not playing, and uh, I was done for the season, so I was kind of expecting it with Steve, like emergence, and he was playing well that I could, uh, uh, I could be the guy on the way out. Uh, but then when it happens, it's uh, it, it always comes as a shock because uh, I was drafted here. I went through the whole American in the AHL with the Syracuse, and, the, the, and that's all I knew for like an NHL stuff uh, point. So. Uh, it was weird. It was a weird feeling, uh, but then again, it's pro hockey, and like we're kind of drilled like that. That you know what it is, what it is, and then the, f it takes 48 hours, and after that, it's a, it's a new challenge, and it gets exciting again. But for a couple of days, it it, it it was a mixed feelings for sure. Injuries was one thing that seemed to plague you throughout your career, and uh, do you ever look back and say, "Doggone, if I could have just been a little bit healthier, even even one of those years, maybe what?" how different it could have been, or is that all part of that, just move on? Uh, I, I moved on now, like, uh, but, you know, I moved on, I'd say, like, at 90%. Once in a while, like, I, I uh, uh, especially around playoffs or beginning of the year, like, uh, I, I still have sometimes a hard time, uh, um, but it is what it is. I, at least I got the chance to play for, what, six or seven years, so for me, as a personal point, I'm happy about that. Like, a lot of guys will never get the, get the chance to play, so I'm I'm happy about it, but obviously I, I I believe I see guys still my age still playing, so I, I believe I probably could have played an extra few few more years. Uh, but again, I, I had three hip surgeries when I, after I got hurt, so at least I have that part covered that I, I tried everything on the medical side to come back, which did, did not work. Um, but 
again, it's, it's, it's stuff you can't control. I, uh, I can't really complain too much. We see guys with concussions problems that have a hard time like applying with their kids. And uh, for me, with my hip, it gets me away from the bad time because uh, I can't. I, I, it gets sore, so uh, it's easier around the house for me. My my family's got to do a couple more things <laughs> extra. So that's there's not only negatives, but uh, no, for sure I would have loved to play a bit more. And then the first couple of years uh, they were hard. Like I went through depression and stuff like that. And um, I talk about it because I know a lot of people sometimes we're shy, we're, we shy, we're shy to talk about these things. But uh, that happened to me. And then uh, now I'm good now. But it was a tough stretch. Like I wasn't expecting to quit hockey at 28 years old. For sure. Do you watch a lot of hockey now? Well, I watch a lot of junior hockey with what I do now. So the NHL, I... I watch more scores, like uh, bits and bits of periods, and uh, uh, mostly playoff hockey. Uh, but just I'm in the rink, like I, I see maybe four, four junior games a week right now. So when I get home, like I want to, like uh, we talk about that balanced right. life. So I, I try to watch other th uh, other things than hockey. So. so you're working with young players, and you're working with a, an agent right yeah. now. So. Are you looking for players to recruit for the agency, or are you going to players that uh, the agency has kind of already taken under their wing to watch them and make them better, or is it a combination? Uh, it's a combination. Like, uh, I work out in the province of Quebec, and um, what I do, the, my role is to recruit the young players, uh, and then, uh, but mostly uh, player development. So when they get into the midget AAA back home, the, uh, that would be almost like the USHL here, under junior a career. I'm the one who kind of go see them play and then talk to the coaches and give them feedback. It's a bit like a scout, pretty much. Uh, but you try to like educate the family as well and set, make sure that they're uh, they're okay. Try to give them the best chances to, to achieve their goals. And uh, I, I enjoy that. Like I enjoy like working with the kids. It's not always easy. Uh, we go through a bunch of different things with them. It's uh, it's almost like a relationship. Right? It's like uh, dating dating somebody because we'll meet them when they're like 14, 15 years old and we're trying to help them and uh, get to the NHL and uh, but it's fun when you see these guys like making like a, a reaching every step it's uh, it, it's fun to see them uh, uh, achieve their dream and that, that's what I get the kick out of it. So. Do you work with just goalies or do you work with forwards and defensemen too? Everybody. 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 So as a, and, and the reason I ask you that is because so many times you see former goalies as goalie coaches, you don't always see them as, you know, assistant coaches, associate coaches, head coaches, uh, Patrick Waugh was, of course. But um, how do you see the game differently as a goalie, maybe than the guys at those other positions? Uh, Most of the game is in front of you when you're playing. Yeah, but that, I think that's why a lot of goalies maybe get involved in the coaching because we're so used to having the, the game in front of us all the time. So you kind of, you see the mistakes before they, uh, they happen. And uh, you get mad at your players because uh, before they make the mistake, because you kind of see it coming, and uh, like, oh, okay, you know, he's gonna pinch. Oh boy, you know, two on one. It's like, and you're like, come on, buddy. Like, you could, but then and they always say, no, I didn't do that. Yeah, that but they, I, I understand. We're in the game. The, the game is so fast now. It looks a lot easier from the stand and from like 200 feet away. Like than when you're like. You have a guy chasing you that's like 230 pounds and wants to, to, to like body check you, and you have to make a decision if you got to pass or shoot. That's a, that's why I was a goalie. I, I thought it was a lot easier to just follow the red, uh, but the, not the red, but the black thing and then the black puck. And uh, those guys have to make decision, and the game is so fast. So I don't know. Maybe that's why it's a lot of goalies. We have it, maybe more used to seeing the game in front of us, but. Uh, what I try to do with the kids more like the mental part of it, kind of like explain them what they expect and what kind of frame of mind they should be going into a game. And we try to work. So every kids are different, so we work on different things as well. So you start telling them that at 14, and you're hoping by 20 they understand what you mean, right? Yeah, sometimes you sometimes it uh, it's it takes longer than that, <laughs> but it's no, no, it's uh, it, it's not always easy, but it's fun. It's a it's a challenge. Uh, but so some kids, some kids like get it like that. There's, we we do work with some really focused kids that are, they're great families, and then they they have fun and they see things the the right way. And then like some other families, they just need a bit more help. And uh, uh, you just never know, right? So. Well, since you left, um, you know you mentioned Steve Mason was a very good goaltender, and now there's a pretty doggone good one here in Sergey Bobrovsky with a couple of Vesnas under his belt. Um, have you gotten a chance to see him play much, even on highlights? And what do you think? Uh, a little bit. Obviously, if he's winning all these trophies, he's pretty good. 
I, I remember him a bit more from his time when he started in Philadelphia, but because uh, uh, we don't get as much as the Columbus games back home. It's all Canadians, Canadians, and the Toronto games. But uh, seeing the highlights, he's obviously a very skilled goalie. Um, and it's the goalie sometimes too is the backbone of the team, and I guess he's been really consistent, and the, uh, the success of the team probably goes through him quite a bit. Uh, but you don't win those trophies if you're a bad goalie. He's a very, very good goalie, uh, and I, I know he can win a lot of games by himself. He's, he's spectacular, and these are for me. I was the athletic guy, and he seems I like those goalies that are athletic. They're just not robots, and uh, he's got a nice style, and uh, uh, I think he'll he'll be really good for for a long time here. Well, if you get all those Montreal games, you get to see a pretty good guy every night, too. Yeah, the price, price. price is pretty good. Yeah, what's, what's yeah. fun to watch is when you play Montreal and watch those two guys go head-to-head. -head. And we had a – there was a great matchup between the two of them in Montreal earlier this year. When you were playing, did you I ever come across – I have to be honest, I, I watch more defensemen now because I'm <laughs> – in the alumni with the Senators, I, yeah. uh, I play defense because I can't play goalie with my hip anymore, so I'm trying to get better as a defenseman, <laughs> and there's a lot of work to do. So I look at the Ds more often than the goalies. So uh, Mark Mathod help you out on your defensive play Mar at all? Yeah, Mark Mathod, he's a good guy. Yeah, I mean, the, uh, I, yeah like, uh, I, there's a lot of work to be done. Like, <laughs> I, I, let, let's put it that way. I don't think I would have ever played in the NHL, and maybe – Maybe even not junior if I would have been a defenseman. So. Are you a shot-blocking defenseman? I, I do block a lot of <laughs> shots, though. <laughs> there you go. Oh, yeah. There you go. But I wanted to ask you, when you were playing goal, were there ever any guys that were playing on the other side that it was, yeah, it's a matchup between the two teams, but, you know, you got extra excited playing against that guy and wanted to do better than that guy? Uh, I mean, for us, like, there was a lot. When I grew up, there was a lot of French-Canadian goalies. So when I got into the league, there was, like, like obviously, Brodeur was all, like, was my idol with Patrick Roy. Uh, but then it was like Luongo, Fleury, uh, Giguer, um, all the French Canadian goalies. Kind of you go in and we know each other because we're skating together during the summer, and so that was always an extra challenge uh, for me. Uh, you always kind of want to be like you're the cool guy uh, from from where you're from. Um, and as far as players, the star players was always uh, like the Crosby, the Ovechkin, and. I mean, for and for us, it was like the Detroit years when yeah. when I started, like the Datsuk and the Zetterberg, and Detroit had really really good teams. So, can always kind of circle those days that okay, they're coming to town, or we're going to Detroit, and then we know they're not going to be easy games. And these are key guys that uh, um, are not that you look forward to play against, but they're definitely a big challenge. So, since you brought up Mark Andre Fleury, I wanted to ask you, obviously. You know, you watch what's going on with him. He just helped the Penguins to win the Stanley Cup, and then he gets selected in the expansion draft. So, you know, you came up with a young team that was just a couple of years beyond being an expansion team. Here's a guy that's got two cup rings in two years, now going to start over again as the backbone of an organization. Uh, you know, as a guy now on the outside looking in, what do you think about that? Well, I think he'll do really well. They'll have a good team right off the bat. I think they, the way that they did the expansion, I think they're going to be – uh, a few years ahead of what I think Columbus and Minnesota were back then because they, they, I think they, the way that they did the draft uh, is probably going to help Vegas a little bit more. And for, for Fleury, he's a really experienced goalie. He's got a, like you said, he's, he's got two cups and he's got the mentality too. He's a great guy. He's a low-key guy. Uh, and where he is in his, his career, like he'll, he'll, he'll be good for them. I, I think he knows to manage his expectation. And I know Marc-André a, a little bit. Because we don't live far too far from each other, and then uh, uh, he's he's gonna be just fine. Like he's a great goalie; he'll figure it out. And then uh, uh, he's he's got the right mentality for that challenge for sure. Well, you just told me walking up here that not only are you still working with hockey players, but you're also into a brand new venture yeah. in your life and a new business, and you're in the wine business now. Yeah, I just started that uh, what, like three or four months ago. I have uh, I've always been really passionate about wine. Uh, it was kind of my not my hobby. It sounds bad as a, as a pro <laughs> professional, um, but I, I I got an early interest, like reading a lot about it and uh, the, traveling on vacation, always trying to go in a wine region, and uh, um, it's always something. The food and the wine industry always really passionate me, uh, so I have the chance through some friends to kind of help us out, put a, a, a private import a wine business back home. Uh, uh, so I'll be importing wines from all over the world and uh, 
propose them to 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 some some clients and some restaurants and it's uh uh it's just for fun it's uh it is a business but i really enjoy it it's uh um i don't know it's just something i'm really passionate about and i have a good time doing it and it's totally different from hockey which i like it's different and uh it's uh when we talk about that balance again in life that's that's something that i need and uh that 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 new project definitely helps me out so so will you do all of the leg work? Are you making all the calls? Are you trying to do the uh, distributing yourself? I, I got my wife doing all the numbers. Yeah. Like the boring part she'll be doing. Uh, but I, I already traveled a few times. I went to Europe, to Spain. Uh, I, with hockey, it's, that's the great thing about our sport. Like we do meet a whole bunch of people through our career. And uh, uh, it's, sometimes it's a bit easier to, to get your foot in the door because after they know a bit what you are, uh, who you are. Uh, so I, I do reach out to, to companies and stuff and, and uh, so far it's been good um, well, we'll see we'll see it's very it's very fun but I'm starting at like at like uh, I have no experience or anything so I'm learning something new every day uh, but again I'm like only 34 years old so there's a lot of a lot of years ahead of me and uh, it's just it's just really motivating I get up I get excited about it to learn new things I, I get to meet new people I get to travel with it so I don't know how long I'm gonna do it but for now I really have fun with it well, I can tell you from firsthand, from experience, if you can find a job that you go to every day that doesn't feel like a job, you've already won. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. And then, uh, yeah, you worked really hard. I remember your days in Syracuse. Like, this guy worked hard, like, like when we are doing the bus rides and the tree and trees, and then he had to carry everything. He, he, you deserve where you are, too. Like, well, thank you. Talk you talk about the players, but you worked hard. You worked your way up. <laughs> now I just show up. Everything's all set yeah, up. Yeah, well, you're good, though. <laughs> like, you deserve it. You're, you're, good at your, you're good at what you do. <laughs> I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. It is great to see you, and uh, I hope I see you more often, not just once every four or five years. Yeah, well, we'll try to make uh, – I'll try to, to come back more often. I want to bring my family here. They've never been here, uh, especially with my, my daughter. I want, I want to show her the city and uh, – um, so for sure, we'll we'll try to, especially with the alumni a group that uh, looks like it's shaping up in the right direction. We uh, will definitely have uh, more excuses to come to Columbus, and then it's not a bad thing. I always have a good time coming here. Well, I know I'm going to embarrass my oldest son, but he met you a long time ago in Syracuse when he was, you know, when he was still a shot blocking defenseman before he was a full time yeah. goalie, and you were, you're the guy that he still talks about to this day, and he's 15, and back then he was what six six something like that five six years old so yeah. um oh, but it's it, it's unbelievable i saw adam's foot kid yeah like uh remember got drafted yeah he got drafted in the first round or early in the second round this year and like these guys were like little monsters around the room <laughs> playing with the tape and the sticks running around after after because when we win like uh like the usually like the kids would come in and stuff and then they can play because there's a good mood around the locker room and like i like I felt really old when I saw this kid like get drafted in the first round. It was like, but it's fun. It's uh, time flies by, and it's uh, I don't know. It's just it's just, just cool to see you though. Well, it's great to have you here. It really is. It's great to see you again. Thanks for coming back to Columbus. Uh, thanks for having me. And again, we look forward to seeing a lot of you. Pascal Leclerc, ladies yeah. and gentlemen, give him a hand. Thank you, guys.